how you guys doing actually when thing comes to very small and very non significant sometime we tend to forget that happened to me i'm really sorry actually the thing what i was supposed to discuss as a very first uh, topic but i somehow i forgot it until i get uh, two tweet messages asking why are you not talking about this yes i'm going to talk about this today but i don't think we are late what is that thread life cycle okay this is a very small topic so i'm going to combine something else with that too right which is very okay thread itself multi threading itself confusing topic and within the multi threading this thread join itself is a more confusing topic because this join is little bit uh, upside upside down uh, behavior right so then let's go there before everything we need to know what is thread life cycle let's start from there that's very simple it is not a very big deal okay so this is how it's work when you just define a thread we just call it is a new thread right so nothing is there this is just a new thread so when this thread start this thread is become ready state this thread is go to ready state or else we call runnable state right so this thread is goes to runnable state so now processor assign some some kind of a ta task to this so this is called assign some task right assign is task not only the assign task mean task is already defined so thread is giving okay hey you go and just uh, do your job right so then this thread call thread is come to running state right thread is coming to running state so after this running state when the run method is over right so when is leave the run method so when is leave the run method this thread is going to be a, this thread is going to be dead is a dead thread right so thread is start with a new then when you start the thread right so when you start the thread it become a ready or runnable state then when you assign task when you when the thread scheduler say hey go now it is become a running thread and then after that it become a dead right thread is dead so this is like usual life right so when a thread is goes dead state there is no way it come back that is done thread is over so but intermediately between these steps there are multiple other steps also for example thread go can go to wait or block state right so there are few methods which call in a, we can call and with that methods thread is go to the block state temporarily hold state right so i'm not going to cover those because to make it so complicated and in each, like very simply you have a new and then it when you start the thread it go to the ready state or runnable state when you when the thread should say uh, push the give the chance to run so it go to the running state and then end of the uh, running state it can go to the dead but keep in mind right so there is a very much possibility from the running state it can go back to ready state right and go back to running state so it can be so uh, go back and forth between the uh, running and the runnable or else uh, running and the ready states but when it go to the dead it is done right that is done so that is all about thread life cycle right so it go in between uh, thread is just born and to the dead and you can go in uh, back and forth in between uh, running and the runnable so now that's lead us to go for the next confusing topic i told you thread itself is confusing and uh, thread uh, join itself little more confusing okay so let's let's take this scenario okay before we go to the thread let's uh, thread join let's get this scenario let's get um, us in office right let's say now i am ready to leave i am ready to go home but i can see my friend is still working i'm going to tell hey Uh, i'm going to wait until you come finish so i made that decision right there are two threads my threads and my friend thread right but my thread i decide i want to wait until that thread complete that work right so since i decide that i going to decide and call wait method right in this case in when it come to the thread it is not wait is a join but let's say i decide and i tell hey i'm going to wait until you come then i'm going to communicate that i'm going to tell i am waiting until you come right so then 
when when uh, my friend finish work then i am going to continue my next process which is i am going home understand very simple again i decide and uh, to wait until my friend finish the work right so now since i decided that i call i make that decision and but my friend should know i am waiting right so i go to my friend and tell i am going to wait until you finish your work right so then that work finish the my next step which is going home i can continue right this is the one scenario the second scenario i'm going to tell it conditionally i'm going to tell go to my friend if you complete your work within one hour i will wait Oh, I will wait for one hour for you you to complete your work, right? If you complete your work, then I can go with you, right? Be if you complete uh, before one hour, let's say you complete your uh, your work within fifteen minutes, then I can go with you. In case you take more than one hour, I just only wait one hour, then I'm leaving. I'm continuing my next process, right? So th this is the real world example. Now take this exactly into the threads. right so now take this exactly into the threads so when it come to the threads this is how it work let's say this is thread 1 right so this is uh, thread 2 right so this both process running so this thread decide i want to wait until t2 complete its work maybe because i need t2 process output maybe let's say t2 is going to take a uh, currency conversion I want to wait until that currency conversion comes to do my next calculation. So I decide here, right? So now I decide. So I have to call the join method because my T one thread decide to wait. T one thread is the one want to wait. In our previous example, I want to wait until my friend come. Not that my friend wants me to wait until my friend complete the work, right? So. i want to wait until my friend complete the work so i have to call it likewise t1 thread want to t2's resource right it is not that t2 want to give its resource to t1 but t2 want a resource t1 depend on it i depend on my friend right so i am waiting until my friend come so i decide likewise t1 decide so t1 going to call join method but In our example, I decided to wait until my friend complete work, and I go and told my friend, "Hey, I'm going to wait until you complete your work." So likewise, T one is going to call the join method on T two. T two dot join. Okay, that is the where little confusion comes. T one is the one who's waiting until T two process and. T one going to call the join method, but on T two, so it's a T two dot join method. So in our example, we had other scenario. I'm going to tell my friend, hey, if you complete your work within the one hour, you can come with me, right? Or else, uh, I'm going in within an hour, right? So likewise, you can call T two join with giving some millisecond, right? So we, you can call Uh, t to the joint, giving some milliseconds, right? Not only that, if you want to more specific, you can call t to the joint some millisecond plus some nanosecond, right? So you can call all these three ways. You can call t to the joint method. So if you call t to the joint method without specifying any time, that is forever. right so if i go and say my friend hey i'm going to wait until you come if my friend take entire night to complete the work then i have to wait entire night until my friend complete the work right but if other way around right so if i say hey i'm going to wait until 30 minutes to you complete your work then keep in mind maximum is 30 minute if my friend complete the work within 15 minutes i can go same theory apply here right so if t2 complete its work before this given time then i can resume my uh, rest of the process i hope you have very clear understanding now 
there is a little more to uh, go with this right so what is that so if you go back to our previous example right so from the thread new state so it come to right it come to ready state or runnable state right so when you sign a process it go to running state this is the running thread right so now someone is going to call join method when the join method called right so when the join method call thread is come to waiting state thread is come to waiting state right which thread t1 thread because t1 call method on a t2 in my example i i finish my work for certain extent next of thing i am going to continue from home right so i go and tell my friend hey i'm going to wait for you now i am the one waiting right my friend is still busy my friend is still working right so i am the one who's calling the uh, join method so i'm i'm the one who's calling saying i'm going to wait so i have to wait so in our example t1 call the join method on a t2 so t2 busy t1 go to the waiting state so there is a rule in the threads right if any thread go to waiting state there is no way directly go to the running state so end of that it has to go to again ready or runnable state right end of the day it again has to go to ready or runnable state right so uh, what are the scenarios this thread co can go to runnable state right so you know let's go back to our real world example now i am waiting until my friend comes what are the cases i can uh, leave this waiting state or else i can continue my work right number one my friend finished the work so i can go right number two if i said i'm going to wait for 30 minutes if my friend is not completed working within 30 minutes then my time is over then i i can go third i'm waiting sometime my home like someone from home call me hey you have to come immediately we have a uh, emergency situation right then i have to go we call interrupt i am waiting someone is interrupting me right so in that case also i have to go right so it's same scenario same scenario apply for thread also right so if the thread is called join thread is t1 is go to the waiting state either t2 complete its job right so if the t2 complete its job so thread can go to the ready state again or time out occurred that mean if if it is a join call with some time then still you can uh, leave the waiting state and go to the ready state again or else someone is notified you and you got interrupted from your waiting so that that case also t2 is leaving the waiting state and go to the ready state right so this is little confusing i understand you have to go back and watch this again step by step always map with the real world scenario when you have a confusion map with the real world scenario you waiting until your friend comes let's say you waiting until your girlfriend comes or you waiting until your boyfriend comes right so then uh, the way you can go either she finish work right or your waiting time is over or you get some other Uh, urgent situation you have to go without waiting for her right so those are the situation and the same way for the threads also so now we know uh, how theoretically it works right so let's see how it's work in a practically so we are going to go to the same example uh, we had uh, in the last video right so this is what we said the thread priorities and all so we don't need the thread priorities so i'm going to uh, remove all those just little clean up right so right so we did little uh, clean up works so now our uh, program is ready right so what my program is does is it is printing a uh, main on the main thread and the child on the child thread right so what i'm going to do is here after this thread start i'm going to say hey i want to wait until my child thread complete right i decide that who decide this i decide this this mean in our case is a main thread main thread decide until child thread complete its work right so i have to call my join method on the child thread right 
So child thread is a thread, right? So I'm going to say thread dot join, right? Thread dot join. That's it, right? So I'm waiting until thread dot join uh, th uh, until child thread complete, right? First, I want to show you without uh, having this uh, thread join, right? So the usual uh, behavior we see, right? So we can see the mix output, right? So you can see the mix output, right? So now I'm going to add the thread dot join. So now what happened here, see this, right? You can see now it always child thread complete its work, right? And it go to the main thread, right? So child thread complete its work, go to the main thread. No matter how many time you run this, you have the same answer. The reason is now child thread is always waiting until uh, sorry, main thread is always waiting until child thread complete. So now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put some uh, break here, right? So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to call sleep method, which is we are yet to discuss on the uh, maybe in the next video, 250 uh, millisecond, right? So when you call the sleep method, you have to uh, catch interrupted exception, right? So we are going to discuss on the next video, right? So now this first thread child thread is waiting until main thread uh, child thread print one line and wait 250 milliseconds. So now you can see it is go slowly, right? So you, now you can see it go slowly. So anyway, but still main thread not doing anything. Why? Because thread join is there, right? So thread join is there. So now end of the main child thread works, then main thread start their work. So now 250 and like for example, it, it, it prints something and it wait 250 milliseconds, right? So that means only four line can print per second, right? So we have 50 lines to print, right? So almost it take, give or take more than 10 seconds to print. So now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to tell, hey, thread join, but just 5000 millisecond mean 5 seconds, right? So give or take, this will take uh, 10 seconds to print, but in this case, I'm going to say, hey, no, wait, I will wait only 5 seconds. So now, in this behavior, right, without setting a time, you can see child thread complete the work and give hand over to the main thread. So now see what happened, right? So now see what happened when you do this behavior, right? So now you can see thread this go half away, child thread go half away, right? So when the 20, right? So when 20 prints child thread, so then it's hand over the process to the main thread and then child thread complete its work. If you want to run again, yes, you can do that. See, that's how it works. Like it's, it's, it's kind of a, a average 20 because uh, four per second. So we are waiting five seconds is four into five, 20. So if you want to go with the five, so I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to wait only one second, right? I will sit one second. So now see after four and it will continue with the main thread. See, after just after printing four, it, it go up to the main thread, right? So this is again, you have a other uh, constructor, right? So you can pass some uh, int uh, nanoseconds, right? So why uh, millisecond is long and uh, nanoseconds is int? The reason is when the nanosecond complete the maximum integer it already converting to the one uh, millisecond, right? For example, there is no point saying 2000 milligrams, right? So you can, I mean, you can say 10 grams and 2500 milligrams doesn't make any sense. 2500 milligrams make other two grams. You can say 12 grams and five milligram, uh, 500 uh, milligrams, right? So same, same scenario here. So you won't see this very clearly because uh, we are not uh, doing this example, but there are three constructors. One, you can uh, call without giving any time, so then thread will wait forever, right? So then uh, second, you can pass the waiting time, only millisecond or millisecond plus nanoseconds, right? So now, I'm sorry, I missed the uh, thread life cycle to start with the beginning. Anyhow, we completed that. And also, now we uh, learn the thread join. I understand this is a little confusing, uh, watch two, three times, then you will understand, right? So next video, we are going to talk about sleep, wait, and the yield method, which is uh, uh, almost doing the same thing in a different way. Then 
let's see you in the next video and make sure you like on my facebook page and uh, subscribe to this youtube and uh, make sure you click on the bell icon so you will not miss any video i'm going to up continue to upload this video so you won't miss and you can keep learning if you subscribe and click on the notification and also uh, follow on instagram and stay in touch see you soon in the next video